Howdy folks, Darth Alpha here. Um, I am going to be playing Kerbal Space Program today, and I am going to be hopefully providing a up-to-date 2023 um, interstellar extended um, set of tutorials. Um, I want to be going over all of the individual engines. I want to go over a couple of different uh, tricks and, and tips I know, uh, various different ways to uh, be way more direct with, with burns, uh, and just how, how things generally work, because this mod, while it has some documentation, a lot of it's outdated, a lot of it's hidden behind links and forums, and, and it's in spreadsheets. I want to provide something that a, a novice can look at, or at least a novice to the, um, to the mod can look at, can watch, can duplicate, and can experiment with further from that point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a new game here. So we're going to be playing in career mode, just so that I can show you the tech tree, but we are, for all intents and purposes, going to be playing uh, Sandbox. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and set that up here. We're going to be playing on normal here. Um, just, you know, we're, we're going to have comm nets and, and different things like that. Um, the only mods I have installed, let's see if I can pull this up. I don't think you'll see it, but I can read them off here. So we have Interstellar Extended, obviously. We have uh, the mods it depends on. Um, we've got mech jib, just so that I can show you different aspects of the ship, uh, like weight and, and things like that. We have stock alike space and parts expansion, um, just so that I can have a little bit more variety, um, with different, um, like, like craft that I'll build. Um, let's see, what else do we have? I also grabbed, um, a real quick little one. It's called find it real quick here Kerbal Space Transport System this I believe is the most um, beginner friendly uh, way to to automate things like putting things in space refueling things in space um, it, it, it's it's pretty good it's balanced around uh, money rather than anything like ores or um, uh, production chains or anything like that I don't have any particular life support setups um, or mods because that's not what this this uh, tutorial is going to be about. Um, we're just going to be I'm going to be showing you how different engines work, how different reactors work, and we're just going to make it. Uh, yeah, we're just going to make it work here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and overwrite that. I know I'm a bit rambly, a um, bit of an ADHD friend. What is this? Yeah, whatever. This doesn't matter. A uh, bit of an ADHD person myself. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring up the debug menu here. Cheats. We're going to max out our technology, our facilities. What is progression? Oh, I think that's all of it, isn't it? I don't know. Okay, so for those new to KSP Interstellar, this is the tech tree. Um, the normal tech tree ends about right here-ish. Thereabouts, missing a couple of bits on the end. Um, Interstellar adds a lot more. Um, it makes the it makes it so that um, you really do need labs. You need to be able to send people everywhere. Um, normal KSP, if you are playing smart, you can end the game before you even leave Minmus. Um, the moon in Minmus, that's all you ever need. Um, this last tech right here, it doesn't show it, but it costs 20,000 science to get. Um, I've had missions where I, I will send back 100,000 science and I don't even finish the full tech tree. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be still missing a lot of these late game techs, which cost 10, 15,000 science apiece. Um, so it is, it, it is necessary to build these really crazy craft. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and start here. We're going to go to the vehicle assembly building and we're going to be going with the, I would say most well-known... Uh, crazy interstellar engine. Let's go ahead and slap down. Oh, I meant to install restock. Oh, I hate some of these default looking things. Okay, so we've got our probe core here. We are going to make this a five meter part and we are gonna grab the Daedalus inertial confined engine. So this guy right here, um, we see it in the trailer for KSP2. Um, yeah, um, what it does is each of these little ports right there is a really powerful laser, um, and it drops, let's see, can I 
I see further up into it? Yeah, it drops little fusion pellets, which are little metallic pow uh, little metallic pellets that contain deuterium and helium three. Um, and they'll drop out, get blasted by the lasers at the right uh, moment, uh, compressed and heated to the point where they deuterium and um, helium fuse, and then you have this uh, open fusion containment. You end up with thrust. Okay, so it's a good engine here. This is a very late game engine. Um, there are a couple of engines that might be better than it, but for the most part, um, this is your engine that will get you to other stars. This is your engine that will get you anywhere in Kerbin within a or anywhere in the Kerbal system within a year. Um, it's pretty nuts. So uh, we can right click on it here. Um, the engine performance here, as you go further down the tech tree you will upgrade the performance of your different engines and reactors. Um, because we've already maxed out our tech tree, we'll be running at the most efficient, which is uh, 3,000 kilonewtons at 1.5 million specific impulse. Um, it also produces uh, various amounts of electricity and heat. Um, the actual dish itself down here doubles as a transmitter, um, which is pretty neat. 40 terameters, I believe that is. That's real far. Um, you can communicate pretty much anywhere in the system with that. Um, the actual stats for the engine itself, 3,000 kilonewtons, 1.5 specific, or 1.5 million specific impulse, um, and yeah, just a couple of different things. As we right click on um, the engine itself, we'll see that it has fuel storage um, for fusion pellets, which are what this engine actually uses. It can also create new fusion pellets. Um, and it has a little bit of storage for that. This helium-3 is actually quite rare. Deuterium is fairly common. Um, I'll, I'll show us how to how to make a little bit more. Uh, we're going to be heading out to Jewel uh, real quick with this thing. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, we are going to be playing effectively in sandbox mode, so I'm just going to cheat in the money. Uh, but I think next episode I will show a late game option to get billions of dollars in just a, a year or two in game and it's just time acceleration for us so okay so let's go ahead and get some fuel here we are gonna grab this one right here i'm gonna scale it up nope wrong one scale it up to five meters we are going to switch window and we're gonna be doing fusion pellets now this is absurdly expensive um yeah this right here is a hundred million of just fusion pellets um but like I said, once we do that other trick, um, this will be a drop in the bucket. This will be nothing. Um, but fusion pellets are quite easy to actually make um, once you get out to Jewel. Um, and you don't, like, we could fill this up uh, if we do, like, 5,000. So that's, like, what is it, half a million or something like that? Okay, just under a million, but still. Um... That will be more than enough to get us to Jewel, and then we'll fill the whole thing up, and then we'll be ready to travel anywhere. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do... Actually... Crank that up. Save that. Okay, so this does need an electrical system. So we're going to go ahead and grab a tokamak here, spherical tokamak. And we're going to grab an MHD generator. I'm always really bad about seeing these. There it is. Okay, crank that up to 5 meters. Um, I don't think it specifically needs to be 5 meters, but I found that that's the most helpful. Okay, so we've got fuel. We've got reactor. Uh, we need radiators. So uh, KSP Interstellar adds a whole lot of radiators. Um, and they are very important. So we're going to crank that up to 4 times symmetry. We're going to click this button down here. Okay, so... This engine and this nuclear reactor up here, um, which will be fusing deuterium and tritium, which is, uh, once again, uh, wait, tritium. No, 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 we're going to switch that. Next fusion mode. Here we go. Deuterium and helium. This is the one that we want. And we're going to go ahead and do this. This one we are going to switch to deuterium Oops. and this one we're going to switch to liquid helium 3 
So helium three is quite rare in Kerbin, um, but at Jewel it's it's crazy plentiful. So um, I'm gonna put a little. What is? What? Oh, neat. These are funky. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna fill them up a little bit just so that our reactor has some initial starting juice, but. Once we get out to Jewel, it won't be a big deal. I am going to slap a, here we go, an atmospheric particle scoop on the front of this. And it looks like we're ready to go. So let's scoot that down. Let's cheat in the money here. Okay, so we're going to Jewel. Oh, actually, let's let's name it a little bit more specifically because we'll be going to Jewel almost exclusively. Okay, so this is going to be the D A E D A L U S I C F um, tutorial. Okay, let's go ahead and save that and launch. Um, we're not going to be worrying about putting these things into orbit um, just because it, it doesn't super matter. Um, it's not, with different mods, it's not terribly difficult to get these things into orbit. Um, I will at some point show us how to do that, but for right now, we are good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that point. Prograde, Pro -grade, thank you. Jettison, jettison. Deploy scoop, start atmospheric extraction. So I'll explain this here once we get to Jewel, um, but for now we're just going to go ahead and get ourselves pointed at Jewel. Nope, that's Pole. What? Weird. Set as target. Okay, let's get ourselves pointed at Jewel. Perfect. Okay, so that is not going to be going through the orbit of Kerbin, obviously. Um, so, okay, let's go over our stuff here. We have on board... Hello? There we go. Uh, we have on board just about 6,000 fusion pellets. Um, and at just 6,000 fusion pellets, you can see that we have 144,000 Delta V. Um, this ship, don't mess around. When, once this thing is full... I mean, we'll have millions and millions of Delta V. So I'm going to go ahead and throttle up. And what we're going to be doing is a direct burn to Jewel. So we're pointing straight at it. And this is not uh, an efficient... This is... We're not worried about efficiency at all with this, uh, with this transfer. We are going for speed. Uh, and this is how you are fast with the Daedalus. Um, while this is burning, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share a bit of information about the actual engine itself. Um, it has a light speed limiter, as you can see here. So um, this engine will get you up to very, very fast. Um, Interstellar Extended will actually model the process of um, time dilation. Um, it'll just do absurd things like that. Actually, I, have, I honestly don't know what I'm talking about here, so um, let's go ahead and keep burning. I'm going to time accelerate. Um, KSP Interstellar adds the ability to accelerate through um, on-rails uh, time warp. So we're going to go ahead and crank her up to uh, 100 times time warp. And you can see we've already canceled out uh, our orbital velocity from Kerbin itself. Um, we're now in an escape, vo <laughs> escape velocity for Kerbal. And we are straightening that orbit out real quick. So we're going to keep burning here. Our <laughs> orbital velocity has gone nuts. Okay, so we've exited the sphere of influence. I'm going to go ahead and hit X. X drops you out of uh, time warp as well as drops your acceleration down to zero. And you can see here we used a bit of fuel, but not too bad. 
Um, and our intersection... Uh, we could just keep burning straight towards Jewel. Um, but we will actually run out of fuel because this thing is not fully fueled. I'm going to go ahead and set this uh, to radial out. Um, that will help push our orbit this way. Which will allow us to actually intercept Jewel. Okay, radial out. Let's go ahead and uh, do some time acceleration here. Okay, so we are burning through our. Oh, it stopped. Hang on. Okay, we're gonna do physical time warp because um, sometimes the radial out doesn't work properly. going to have to do physical time warp. Uh, but you can see that we are pushing our periapsis out and we're changing the angle of our uh, of our orbit here. Actually, I wonder if I can hit that. Oh, that works. There we go. Okay, so now we're changing quite quickly. Here. There we go. Okay. Set this to radial out. We're going to fine tune this intercept here. Fine tune. There we go. And let's go ahead and burn normal. I've used about half of my fuel, so I don't want to use too much more. Otherwise, we're going to have a hard time slowing down at the other end. Uh, I guess we don't have to drop into a, uh, straight into a circular orbit. We can do a bit of an elliptical one. Oh, nope. Okay, we want to burn anti-normal. Um, these things are a little slow turning because they are so massive. Um, so you can do physical time acceleration in order to speed up the turn time. Okay, so let's go ahead and get closer in there. And that'll be plenty right there. Um, let's burn a little more radial out. Just to fine tune this. I'm going to try and get this within about a megameter. So that's pretty much square under the planet, back under, or black, back to anti-normal. That'll bring our periapsis up, upwards, more equatorial, however that works. I could use a maneuver node, but, like, the, the amount that we're changing here is so minimal. Okay, so that'll get us within a megameter, um, and it will only take... 56 days to get to our periapsis. I'm going to go ahead and throw a quick save down, and I'm going to add a maneuver, and let's see what sort of acceleration we're looking at to just get into an equator or a elliptical orbit, because we have 70,000, so we, we should have plenty. We are ever so slightly altering the orbit here. <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. Okay. Should point out, we're using, you know, at this point, 25,000 delta V, and we've got almost triple that amount left in the vessel itself. 35... Okay, no, 
now we're starting to slow her down. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and point at our maneuver node. And actually, I'm going to have MechJeb go ahead and do this one. Uh, because MechJeb will perform these sort of burns. Um, let's go ahead and do a. Oh, just hit execute next node. Okay, so another quick save, execute next node. And let's go back to our vessel here. So to jewel in 56 days is pretty absurd. Um, a normal burn that you would perform in KSP with like by impulsive Hoffman stuff. Is that what it's called? By impulsive, by impulsive Hoffman. Yep, by impulsive Hoffman transfers. Um, you know, that's, that's the sort of stuff that would take you a year or two to get to jewel, uh, depending on you know, how, how efficient you're being with the burn. But at this point, we're not worried about efficiency. We are worried about speed. And as you can see, we're in Jules' sphere of influence at 60,000 meters per second. That's just absurd. And this is how far back we're burning in order to, to get this. Um, I suspect that we're going to need to manually adjust this uh, burn because we're probably not going to actually make this work. Um, MechJeb and uh, the maneuver nodes assume pretty much instantaneous acceleration. Um, so... The maneuver node is doing the math as if we were right here and just like unleashed a small planet behind us at about half the speed of light in order to um, do some near instantaneous acceleration. Because we're going to be accelerating for a near near upon 40 minutes, um, our end orbit is not going to look nearly that good. In fact, I'm actually going to abort this notification. There we go. Let's go ahead and point at the maneuver. I'm going to do this manually so that we can physically time or. Uh, on rails time accelerate. So, okay. Yeah, we're good on, we're not gonna overshoot or anything. quite going to be how it looks there, but we will get an orbit and we will have just enough delta V. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so once we're here, let's go ahead and get ourselves out of Jewel. That's actually a bit too much. We do want to skim real close because I'm going to show us how to make more fusion pellets. So 70, a little further in. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. So... 56 and Mechjeb absolutely can do this one because it's a nine second burn. Okay. So we've already got this set up. I'm going to talk about this while we're going. Um, so this is an atmospheric scoop. Um, as you get close to an, a planet's atmosphere, um, there really is no definite line where the atmosphere ends and space begins. Um, in real life, anyway. In KSP, you do have just a line, and anything above that line is a stable orbit that'll stay there forever. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and anything below that will eventually decay and hit the planet, and it will do so quite quickly. Um, KSP Interstellar sort of tweaks that modeling a little bit, where if you are skimming real close, and you have one of these um, interfaces, um, you will extract... Um, Trace, trace stuff. Obviously, if you're going through the atmosphere, you'll get much more. Um, but you'll also tend to rip things apart. Okay. Um, so right now, we're quite high up. So we're not getting hardly anything. But as we see, once we get real close... There we go. Okay. Now that we're getting real close here, let's go ahead and... Point of prograde and warp here. Okay, there we go. 
So, we are taking in 1.22-ish, uh, is that megatons? Metric tons? MT. Uh, the actual details are not crazy important. Uh, you can see the, the atmospheric composition of Jewel. We have hydrogen, uh, which is crazy abundant. Deuterium, which is eh, not crazy abundant, but there's still plenty of it, especially considering we're processing tons of it per hour. Um, helium-3, normal helium, ammonia, and methane. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Um, this is great if you need to refuel your earlier game stuff that are burning just uh, hydrogen. Just, you can skim by Jewel and you'll be fine. But deuterium and helium-3 um, are actually used to produce fusion pellets. So we are going to go here until it start creating fusion pellets. And it does so quite quickly, actually. You can see our Delta V ticking up quite quickly. Where's Jewel? Oh, there's Jewel. Hello. Okay. Um, and the closer you get, the faster it will process. So let's go ahead and crank this around again. It will process um, on rails uh, acceleration. Okay, so in just one little elliptical orbit, we already have back almost as much uh, fusion pellets as we started. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click back here. We're gonna change a maneuver. We're gonna drop this into a mostly circular orbit. I don't wanna burn for too long because otherwise MechGem won't be able to do it. Yeah, that'll work. Let's go ahead and execute next node. A little physical time acceleration in order to get this big old boat twisted around. Um, with with things this large, um, if they're not going to be docking to anything, you really don't need uh, RCS. You can just rely on these uh, reaction wheels, and they just get you there eventually. Um, a couple other important notes are this atmospheric particle scoop needs to be facing into your orbit, so it needs to be facing roughly prograde. You can see that right here, not facing orbital direction. Um, when you jettison uh, the little shrouds that cover this before, uh, before it deploys, those can cause damage to your ship, uh, but they go away as soon as you uh, activate uh, on-rails time acceleration. Okay, so we've already used up all of our helium-3, which is why we're no longer producing fusion pellets. Um, and you can see right here, um, I mean, there's, there's no particles there, and you can't see the lasers, but right there is the moment of fusion. Fusion occurs right there, um, multiple times a second, I would assume. Um, and it just provides that continuous pressure. This engine really does just sip, absolutely sip, at um, these fusion pellets. It uses like less than one of them a second. Well, thank you. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can actually see where that's at. Nah, I don't see it. acceleration. Boom, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and slap this into a prograde. A little physical time acceleration to get that swung around. There we go. Let's go ahead and do some on-rails acceleration. And you can see real quick, we're cranking out a lot of fusion pellets. Um, it will actually perform better the lower we are. So I'll go ahead and drop us into an even lower orbit. Um, I should point out that we are only 64 days since we launched this vessel. Um, we have reached Joule, refueled to our initial starting point, and are well past that already. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and lower our orbit even further. Uh, Joule's atmosphere starts at 200,000 kilometers. So, let's go ahead and get uh, about 2.5 thousand. There we go. And I'll go ahead and change my apoapsis to 
two five five thousand kilometers. Wait, does that work? Mm, yes. Okay. And that's only a six second burn, so MechJab will do that just fine. Um, and when we're skimming that low, we'll fill up this fusion pellet um, in just a few days, maybe a week or two. Physical time accelerate. Um, I will be adding just a couple more mods. Um, I went for a very, very bare bones mod list um, for these first episodes just because um, I wanted to show I, honestly, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be putting together tutorials for KSP Interstellar and then people comment, oh, actually that engine's not from KSP Interstellar. Um, so that's that's the reason I, I have so few mods right now. But I'll be adding a couple more, like uh, one that uh, lets us time accelerate at faster rates and a couple other things like that. Okay, close enough. Let's lap it down prograde. Okay, and let's do a quick save just in case. Orbit's not doing anything funky. I have had that happen where, uh... okay, uh, where something weird happened with the orbits. Okay, there we go. We are full almost. Let's fill up the, oh, the deuterium is going down. Okay, so we're 85 days in. We've reached Joule. We've reached a crazy low uh, orbit. And we're full. We have... I mean, there's so much delta V in this thing, it doesn't even tell us how much delta V there is. Um, I've noticed this is a problem once you get above... What is that? 10,000 or 100,000 seconds? 100,000 seconds. Your delta V glitches out. Some people will think, oh, it's not working. Let me see. I actually don't know if this pops up here. Does this show us our max delta V? No. Um, maybe I can do it with Flight Engineer. I'll need to look at it for sure. Um, surface, target, no. Okay, so I, it looks like MechJab won't do it, but we're gonna go ahead and up our apoapsis out a ways. Uh, we'll go a little further. That looks good. We're going to go ahead and circularize once we get out there. Um, and it says we don't have the Delta V, but we absolutely do. Um, however, we're not going to be able to do this with MechJet because it thinks we have no Delta V, and so it will start burning four days in advance, which that is not correct. We have probably well over... I honestly don't know how to calculate it, but we've got well over a million, probably. A million Delta V. So, let's go ahead and get to this point here. Um, by the way, if any of you who are watching know how to fix this, I would greatly appreciate it, because it is a little annoying not knowing exactly uh, how much Delta V you have. So, let's go ahead and warp here. Um, I assume it's a fairly simple fix, but I could be totally wrong. Maybe it's just something in the settings. Okay, so that's 800 meters a second. I suspect it won't need very much at all. I'm gonna go ahead and just go prograde here. Slap it on out a little further. Crank our periapsis out of low joule. There we go. And let's head back home to Kerbin. Um, so let's go ahead... enough set this as our target head on back I'm gonna get above Jules orbital plane here um, just so that there's nothing yucky occurring and we're gonna go ahead and burn 
uh, similar to how we did before. We're going to go straight back to Carbon, adjust um, our close encounter, and pop right back into orbit. Okay, we're heading there. Pointed there. I'm going to go ahead and time accelerate. Once again, this is obviously not an efficient way to do this, uh, but the efficient way is the slow way. We are going for maximum speed uh, because we have so much Delta V, the computer literally won't tell us how much we have. And I should also point out, um, the Daedalus drive is what's considered a torch drive, um, i.e. it, um, often with rockets, you end up with teeny tiny little thrust but crazy efficiency or you end with crazy thrust but like no efficiency to speak of at all um and the daedalus drive has both it, you know 300 kilonewton or sorry 3000 kilonewtons is nothing to scoff at okay we're gonna need to burn quite a bit here because um carbon is is obviously moving this way and it's moving that way quite quickly as far as planets go. Actually, let's go ahead. Let's get out of Jewel's influence here. Boy, Jewel is massive. It's going to take us two days to reach escape there. Okay, and once we get out of Jewel's sphere of influence, we're going to go ahead and do radial in. I guess we were at radial out before. No. Just some weird phantom stuff. And we're going to go ahead and set up to stability assist right there. Because as we flip our periapsis around the star, um, it will we'll be doing radial out, but it'll be roughly the same direction. I'm going to go ahead and set up there. Dropping the periapsis. And here we go. So now we need to burn, I believe that we're going to need to burn normal to raise our periapsis up more into the plane of Kerbin. I think this is how that works. Are we above? Mm, we'll see. Yeah, that's raising, or that's uh, raising our periapsis. We actually need it to go in. So let's go anti-normal. So that's going to be our closest approach. That's not going to work at all. So let's go radial out. And we're going to raise it so that we're pretty much going to hit Kerbin straight on. This is actually the first time I've done this particular maneuver. So, uh, like, I've gone to Jewel with this with this burn before, but I've never gone back to Kerbin. So you can see there's a bit of a learning curve. But you have so much Delta V that you can afford to, to mess around a little bit. Let's go ahead and time accelerate. Oh, right, that's not working. So, radial out, drop that. We've got to switch it just to stability assist. Um, if, if your direction gets misaligned with what you're actually trying to point at, you will stop accelerating, even though it'll still play the engine noise. Okay, so stability assist there. There we go, that's looking right. Any second now, we're going to get a good intercept. Probably. Uh, looks like we're a little high, actually. So let's go ahead and burn normal.
Okay. So the descending node's popping in here, which means we're pretty much getting on the same plane as it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and time accelerate to this point right here. Uh, let's... Oh, there we go. Okay, so if we burn radial in... Yeah, if we burn radial in, we'll be able to intercept somewhere around here. Let's look at our fusion pellets. Ah. I'm actually going to tell this to stop creating fusion pellets because I want to see how long this, or how much fuel this actually takes. Stability assist. Yeah, we're closing in. an intercept. Let's go ahead and switch to Kerbin and see what sort of intercept we've got here. Okay, so that's pretty far out. Let's go ahead and bring that in a little closer. And we'll go ahead and stop it right there. Let's throw a quick save down and let's warp to this, uh, let's set to retrograde and warp to this periapsis right there. So it's going to be another 50 some odd days in order to get back. Um, we are cruising at a solid, you know, 60,000 meters a second, so... Ooh, okay. <laughs> it's always a little tighter than I like it. So. <laughs> okay, let's do some time acceleration here. We, of course, could have gotten closer. Um, we might actually pop out of the Sphere of Influence. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and pop out of the Sphere of Influence, but... We're going to keep burning. Uh, well, we might not. No, it looks like we're going to... Yeah, we overshot. We overshot a good ways. So, we've popped out of the Sphere of Influence now. We're just going to go ahead and set back to... Set Kerbin as our target. And burn towards the target. Like I said, we just have so much delta V, this just doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and do our target velocity. Yeah, there we go. Bring it up to 100 times. That's funky. Let's go anti-normal. Uh, this is a learning experience for me too. This sort of uh, maneuver I'm unfamiliar with. Uh, the I'm sure that there's probably actually a more efficient way even when you're not going for efficiency to do this. Orbital normal. No, we want anti-normal. Nope, normal is what we want. Oh, we're actually in the sphere of influence. Oh, shoot, I didn't even notice. When did that happen? No, we're not. Okay. I'm very confused. Oh, we need to go radio out. Okay, because... Oh, I see. Yeah, we're going to miss. Because it'll have moved further that way. Okay. It's all trial and error here. Yeah. We might need to burn a little bit back the other way. Okay, getting closer. There we go. Let's burn anti-normal to get that raised up a bit. I hope. Is that looking? Nope, that's the opposite direction. Like I said, all a learning experience. Just 
want to get our periapsis a lot closer. Um, we're going to be coming in a lot slower this time, so we're less likely to overshoot. There we go, that'll work. Um, let's go ahead and do this so that I don't overshoot this time. See what we're looking at for the amount of burn time. Okay, so that's, um, well, it doesn't tell us, but only about 8,000 delta V, so I'm going to go ahead and warp right about here. Slap on that accelerator. Okay, so that's actually going to put us in an anti clock or a clockwise orbit, which is not the kind of orbit that we'll want. Um, assuming that we were going to have anything like intercepts or, or something like that, but we will have plenty more delta v than we need to correct that. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and stop that. Uh, retrograde is what we want. The accelerating. Yes, okay, and so you can see we're not going to overshoot now because our escape time is going up. Um, so it will take us longer and longer to reach the escape. That's how you can tell if you're going to overshoot or not. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of time acceleration here. There we go. set that to stability assist because we're going to go ahead and reverse this orbital th uh, direction. Okay, let's go ahead and crank this up to 500. There we go, 500, add a maneuver. Let's get on down to our next maneuver node. Oop, overshot it. Oh well. Just crank that to retrograde. So it won't be a nice pretty orbit, but we will be in orbit. And a low one at that, so. I guess it is technically high curve in orbit, but honestly, I. Like, when you're doing this sort of stuff, I consider above the MUN as high curb in orbit, and anything below it is low. Um, even though I think the official line is like 250 kilometers. It's kind of kind of quite low, in my opinion. Anyways, so we get the idea. I could spend another couple of minutes uh, finagling this into a nice, pretty, circular orbit, but I just don't want to. Um... So, once again, this has been our Daedalus engine. We've shown off a little bit of how to use the atmospheric particle scoop. We've shown how to create more fusion pellets. Uh, we've shown that we really don't need that much fusion, uh, that many fusion pellets in order to just actually get to Joule and get back. Um, as you can see, our return trip, I mean, we used about 10,000 fusion pellets, but we have 70, what is that, 700,000 fusion pellets? That's nothing. Um, in fact, I'm half tempted just to see how fast we could get this sucker going uh, because there are mods that add other um other star systems and stuff that you need to go to um and your daedalus engine that's what that's designed for this little uh short little neighborhood jaunt to and from jewel it's overkill for what this engine is capable of um but then again if you're not using or if if brute force doesn't work you're not using enough of it which is what this engine uh is meant for so i'm gonna go ahead and end the recording there um i think my next episode is going to be going over um maybe a, a reactor or two and then i'm going to show you guys how to make uh, billions of dollars in ksp uh with interstellar extended because um like this this craft i forget exactly how much it costs but it was tens of millions of dollars hundreds of millions if i'm not mistaken uh to to launch it full 
Um, so if you want to avoid, uh, you know, an hour or so um, finagling your orbit to Joule or whatever to fill it up, um, I can just show you how to launch it full. So I'm going to go ahead and enter there and uh, go... Uh, if, if you guys could let me know where you found this video at, that would be awesome. I'm going to go ahead and post it to a couple of different places. Um, and if you could just comment letting me know how you found it, uh, if it was helpful, any anything that I may have missed for you experts out there, and anything that you found particularly helpful or, or that you learned. Um, but yeah, I, honestly, I don't care if you subscribe or not. I'm super inconsistent with, with making videos and stuff like that. And, um, I don't want to clog up any... Uh, subscription boxes if you guys or if I, if I uh, unload a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and enter there. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.